Deacon Ray here, whether you're joining us live this morning or if you are uh, looking at us later on as your schedule allows, uh, we're glad to have you with us. Uh, today is Ash Wednesday. It's also Valentine's Day. It is also uh, the 14th of February. So we're, uh, we're just about halfway through. Normally we would be at the halfway point, but because it's leap year, we'll, uh, we're just about, right? We get to about 12 o'clock today. We're going to be halfway through the month of February. So uh, it is Ash Wednesday, and towards the end I'll have some information about what's going to be going on here at church. Uh, if you're able to attend, we do have a 4.30 and a 6.30 uh, um, uh, service, I should say, yeah, uh, with ashes and communion. And there will be the dinner tonight, but there's no other uh, additional activities. There is only uh, those things that are going on, as mentioned there. So we're going to be looking again as Ash Wednesday, and I've chosen Job 42, 5 through 6 to be part of uh, our discussion today. And uh, this uh, picture here showing uh, a representation of uh, Job and uh, at least two of his friends. Uh, sitting there, dust and ashes in place, and uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit there. Uh, Toddy and Dave, good to see you. Karen, glad to have you along as well. Don't forget that Bible study will be this morning at uh, 9.30 for those that are able to make it, and uh, just glad to have you come along for that as well. I'm not sure which pastor, but uh, good morning there, Fred. Good morning, Doreen. And again, happy Valentine's Day and happy uh, Ash Wednesday. Uh, uh, blessed Ash Wednesday, I should say. Uh, but uh, let's open the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for your love, your grace, and your mercy that continues to pour out upon us each and every day. Lord, you are so kind to us, though we truly do not deserve any good thing from you. And Lord, so we pray that you'd be with us today as uh, we consider your word, uh, the word spoken by Job uh, in his interaction with you, and uh, that from this we would learn also, Lord, of your great love for us, and that you come even through the hardships of life, with a purpose for our betterment and for our growth, and in the end, for our being with you for all eternity. Lord, truly, as we go through those hardships of life, it's not easy, it's not to be dismissed as just no big deal because it's pointing out something to us in our life sometimes or in the lives of those around us as you work through these things to bring praise and glory to your name. We humbly praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And again, welcome to all that are here today, and glad to have you here. Uh, first of all, Ash Wednesday, uh, you can look through the Bible, you're not going to find any commandment uh, to have a celebration of Ash Wednesday. Um, comes around about the 8th century, as far as anything I can find. Uh, if anybody knows of any other information, I'd be happy to have you share that. Uh, but again, what is the purpose behind uh, Ash Wednesday? And it is to start that, uh, that journey with Jesus as he makes his way to the cross. Uh, why 40 days? Well, there's some significance in the scripture about the 40 days. Uh, we have the 40 days of the flood. Uh, we have Jesus 40 days in the uh, in the wilderness as uh, you know, the temptation of Satan was uh, cast at him with full power. And then also we have the 40 years of the Israelites as they wandered in the, uh, in the desert because uh, God had said, you will not enter into this promised land. Uh, it didn't disqualify them from obtaining eternal life. It's just that they were not going to be a part of the uh, people that would inherit that land because of the rebellion against God. Uh, but as we take a look at it, right, the idea of ashes uh, and dust uh, in, in the scriptures tell us that we're going to, from dust we came to dust we're going to return. And uh, that's what uh, we're going to read about here in Job. Uh, but I just kind of want to kind of do that. I also did a little research. What did Martin Luther think about uh, Ash Wednesday? And what I could find on it is uh, he supported it, his biggest fear is that it would become just a ritual, just a tradition. And uh, that that's, has a lot of truth to it, doesn't it? Uh, we can take some of the things of, of uh, even Easter, even Good Friday. It's We do go to church, and it's what we do, and you know, and not really gaining a lot from that. Um, going there with just uh, the, well, it's a habit, right? It's something that we do. And so God would ask of us to, whatever we do, to do with intentionality, to praise him, to glorify his name. Uh, if we're going to take that 40-day journey with Jesus uh, to the cross, then we want to do so uh, in, in contrition. We want to do so uh, in humility. We want to do so with intentionality, to take this and make it something. Now, a lot of people, for the uh, 40 days of Lent, which, by the way, does not include Sundays, and there's a reason for that. Sundays are for uh, the worshiping of our Lord. 
uh, as a resurrection. Every Sunday, every Sunday that we come to church is a celebration and a reminder of Easter without all the fanfare and the pomp and circumstances of the resurrection Sunday. But that's why we don't include uh, the, uh, the Sundays in that time. Uh, now, whether if you're going to be fasting, whether you want to take that one day off during the week because it's not part of the Lenten journey and, you know, go back and go back onto it on the Monday, that's something that you would have to come to, to grips with. On the other side, as I mentioned, sometimes people give up things, right? They give up uh, chocolates, they give up uh, this, that, or the other. Uh, if we're going to give up something, my challenge would be to give up something that is really, really harmful to yourself. Uh, maybe looking at some of your relationships, maybe looking at some of your interactions and uh, things like that, maybe some of the places that you go, uh, you know, other different type of things. And other people take up something. Uh, there's a challenge out from the Lutheran uh, Hour Ministries to, uh, they've got a podcast or there's a place you can go and listen to the Gospel of Mark. It's about a two-hour reading. It's supposed to be very interactive. Haven't gone there yet. Uh, certainly going to be getting there. Uh, but the challenge for them is to listen to it weekly. Um, you know, oh, it's about a two-hour run. So just throughout the week, just take a little bit of time and listen to it. And uh, use that as something. Others pick up Bible reading themselves or maybe finishing a book. Uh, different things that we can do. But all of it should be geared towards uh, walking with our Lord to the cross. And uh, we have the command of our Lord that when we fast, right, to not do it with those long faces and walking around, oh, poor me, look at me, look what I'm giving up. Because you know, as he says, those people already have the reward. Uh, if we want that kind of reward, it's where we go into the closet and secretly pray, where we, we give uh, uh, gifts of alms, as it were, uh, and we do it without drawing attention to ourselves at all, right? Doing it quietly. Uh, those are the kind of things uh, that if we're going to do during this time, that uh, we want to have that kind of an attitude, that kind of a uh, thing. Edward, glad to have you. Carrie, good to see you. Janelle, thought I'd take a couple of seconds here and just see who else has dropped in. Uh, Sally and Laura, again, glad to have everybody here. Um, but again, I'll go back to, and I've already kind of used up quite a bit of time just on the introduction to this, but, you know, Ash Wednesday is something we want to make sure that we're going to do it. If we're going to do it, we do it with the right attitude, um, with the right uh, motivation, and that it doesn't just become a habit. Now, turning to our, our text for today, Job 42, 5 through 6, uh, if you're familiar with the story of Job, uh, then, you know, you got an idea what he went through, uh, a tremendous amount of loss, you know, losing everything, literally. You know, in one day, kids, riches, uh, everything. And uh, at some point, you know, the next day, he gets another visit, and uh, he's got these boils all over his skin, and, uh, you know, just uh, so bad that you could take a broken piece of pottery and just scrape the pus out of him. And uh, then his wife comes out and says, just curse God and get it over with. So, I mean, he's, he's got quite a bit going against him here. And in all fairness to his wife, as wrong as that is, she was also going through a lot of pain and suffering because everything that Job lost, she lost. Uh, so having a, an empathetic heart for her and understanding that she was hurting, but again, for her to tell him to curse God and die, absolutely wrong. But my point being is that all these things are going on in his life. And if anybody's got a right to feel uh, offended or whatever, we'd think that Job would be. And then his three friends come along. And for most of the rest of the book, there's this back and forth between them. And each one is trying to point out that it must have been something that Job did. He must have caused this. It's got to be something, some unrepented sin. Something's going on here. And that God is punishing him and trying to get Job to fess up and, and then to bring that peace there. But when we get to the end, uh, God really tears into those three friends too. And so when we think about it, right, there's, as we deal with people in our lives, interact with people, we want to make sure we're not blaming them and pointing the finger at them. Now, sometimes it's justified, but even there, empathy goes a long, long way in building a bridge that helps people uh, to know the love that God has for them. So, as we look at this here, right, God has now gone through a, a series of questions. I don't know how many questions there are, but there's a whole bunch of them. And it gets to a point where Job just says, hey, I got nothing. I can't answer any of your questions. And then God tears into it for a little bit longer, and then we come to the point where now Job has truly understood what's going on here. It's not just that God has the power and the wisdom and the knowledge, but it's also an act of love on God's part. And so even though from a world's view, um, we might see all the loss and suffering that Job went through as a, a huge crime against him, God had a purpose in it. 
And the purpose was not to harm Job. It was actually to bring him closer to him. And sometimes in our lives, as we go through situations where everything is going just so wonderfully, we know what starts to happen. We start to drift away. Our thinking starts to become self-sufficient and all the other things that come with that. And so when we find ourselves in those circumstances, it's good to go back to uh, the book of Job and to realize, right, that everything we have is a gift of God. And if he chooses to take it back, it's his to take. If he wants to let a cancer inflict upon us, uh, it might sound harsh, but it's his right to do that. It doesn't say he causes it, but if he allows it, right, if he allows these things to happen, then we as believers in Christ need to understand that he has a purpose, even in all of these things. Our God loves us and cares for us. And how do I know that? Well, let's see if I can get this over here. We'll see what happens. See if I can not blank us out here again. Right here. That's how we know that our God loves us and cares for us. We have that wonderful thing called the cross, right? That event when we think about all that Jesus went through, all the pain, all the suffering, uh, everything. You know, in that picture of Job, uh, there was friends sitting around him. But when we really truly understand, you know, Jesus was alone. Uh, you know, you know uh, John and, and his mom were there and a few friends, but basically even they didn't understand what was going on and there was a lot of sadness on their part. And so Jesus literally is alone in that moment because even the father has turned his back on his son. He has forsaken him, uh, left to uh, deal with our, our uh, sin and our shame and the pain and everything that we truly deserve. And so when we start to understand the depth of God's love for us as shown at the cross and then revealed in the empty tomb as well, knowing that what Jesus did was not for himself but for us, then we get to, to have this beautiful picture of our Lord and Savior walking beside us. You see, not just were the three friends there with Job in his pain and his misery, but Jesus was there too, even though he hadn't taken on the flesh yet. The second person of the Trinity would have been there right by his side. In fact, in the Psalms, it says that God is the shade at our right hand. And, you know, that's how close Jesus is, not only to, or was to Job, but also to you and to me as we go through our struggles, as we go through our pain. And I know a lot of you are really struggling with some really heavy duty issues. And what God would ask of you to learn through these things is that he's not punishing you. That he's bringing you through these things for a purpose that will glorify his name, will bring honor and praise to his name, and is also for you, uh, that even in the midst of your struggles, you will grow in grace and mercy as you again uh, look at his love. For those of us that uh, at this point who are not going through hardships, look back, we've been through a lot of them ourselves, all of us, and, and if we, as I look back, I, I, I can see where God was interacting through all of those things. And believe me, there's things I was going through that I absolutely would have just preferred not to have walked through. And yet God brought me through them anyway. Even though I was angry at him, even though I was upset with him, even though I thought that maybe he stopped loving me. But he never did. And he never will. And so when you and I can gain that kind of an understanding as we walk through those hardships, just remind yourself that Jesus is there with you. And as much as we might cry out to take it away, he doesn't always take it away. Sometimes that cup is going to stay with us for a while, and he's going to have us drink of it. Again, not for our destruction, but for our betterment, as he continues to build us up into the image of his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for allowing me to come and spend some time with you today. And just all the people, Joan, good to have you here, and Betty Ann, glad to have you here as well. And I just pray that you'll have a very blessed day. Let me get this one up here, boy, I'll tell you. I've fallen down on the job. Good help is so hard to find. That's all I can say. And again, I know some of you are having trouble with the volume. I don't know what else to do. Uh, everything on my end indicates that the volume is going out as it should. And so uh, hopefully if it's uh, something on your end, maybe we can figure it out. I'll, I'll get with our technician guy, John, and see if we can maybe find out if maybe something's going on, maybe an intermittent uh, failing or something like that so but thank you everybody and i just pray god's peace will be with you and look forward to seeing you later on and hopefully at church tonight as you're able to god's peace be with you